taxes hitting the headlines. We're going to talk about money now, obviously. Record transfers, high wages, also to the cost of TV rights. Yeah, because Mike just mentioned it there. Because even for a spot flush with cash, the likely transfer fee of Brazilian striker Neymar from Barcelona to Paris Saint-Germain, well, it's, it's eye-watering, isn't it? It is eye-watering. The new £200 million move represents a 110% increase on the previous record. Well, Kieran Maguire is a football finance lecturer and joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. Is he worth it? He is to uh, the Qatari owners of PSG, uh, and he probably is to PSG as well, because they've, they've struggled really to make an impact upon European football in terms of competing with the big boys. Such can as one man make a difference, though? A £200 million man, can he make that much of a difference to a team? If he, could, if he can push them beyond the quarterfinals of the Champions League, he can. But also he brings a lot with him, because he's got a, a bigger social media following than, uh, than Real Madrid, than Manchester United on an individual basis. So PSG will try to piggyback upon his fame to become more famous themselves. Why is it so much bigger than uh, any fees we've seen before? I know they are, they're always heading upwards, aren't they? They never seem to go down. But why is it so much bigger? He signed a new contract with Barcelona last year. Uh, and into that contract was written that his release clause would be €220 million. Euros. Now, at the time, everybody just sort of sniggered and they thought it, it would never be paid. But I think because the Qatari owners are so desperate to increase their profile, and this is being done for as much as political reasons as it is for football reasons, that they just said we're prepared to bite the bullet and pay that sum of money. The political reasons being? If you take a look at what's happening in the Middle East at present with uh, Qatar being isolated by the other Middle Eastern countries, what Qatar is doing is this sort of a show of defiance that we are in a position to, we're still in business, we're, we're, still, we're still able to buy whatever we want, wherever we want. What does it mean for the football market as a whole then? Well, everything's going to be ratcheted up because uh, Barcelona now have £200 million sitting in a bank account. The, they're going to have to replace Neymar, so therefore the, the clubs that they're going to be approaching to replace him are going to say, well, previously we might have tried to sell you a player for £60 million, but if that's going to be Griezmann, if that's going to be Coutinho, whoever it's going to be, the selling clubs are going to say, well, we now want 80 or 90 or 100. How do we break down the money? Because often we talk, we talk about, OK, these are, this, these are their salaries, the players' salaries, and then we look at the endorsements, the advertising, the sponsorship. How does this work with Neymar and his surrounding management team? Well, his, his manager is his, his father, so his manager will take a, a proportion of the fee as, as a negotiating Didn't tool. Didn't you say, Steph, he's going to earn more then, than Messi? Yeah, Messi, Messi. earns, the da the da his dad, Neymar's dad's going to earn more from this deal than Messi earns at the moment. C certainly, uh, and but on a £200 million deal, you'd expect the manager's fee or the agent's fee to be quite significant. Um, so there will be image rights. Now, whether those image rights are going to go to PSG or whether they're going to go to Neymar will determine just how much money is going to be split between the two. So PSG might be able to recover some of this fee because they will get a proportion of every time that his signature is, is on a commercial deal, then they'll, they'll be able to take a slice of that. Now, my worry when I hear about these big numbers, I know a lot of the money comes from all the TV rights and all the, the commercial deals, as you say, but what does it mean for fans? Because they already fork out a lot of money for tickets. So, you know, are we going to see this push at prices? No, no. If, if you take a look at what's happened in prices over the past sort of five or six years, I think the Premier League in particular has realised that it's reached a tipping point. So most prices have been frozen or, or kept close to the rates of inflation. Um, football clubs get their money from three sources. They get it from the fans. I don't think the fans can be squeezed any further. They get it from TV. The TV money is going to continue to increase, and they get it from commercial sponsors. And I think you'll find that the sponsors, especially in relation to PSG, will be prepared to pay more. So I think the fans are actually going to be quite safe in this. Yeah, that's good to hear. Kieran, good to talk to you. I could talk about this for hours, really. It's fascinating, isn't well, it? Well, yeah. I could have it's that a lot of money. Hours. Yeah. And I do, we were working out earlier what it's the equivalent to, and it's like buying three Boeing planes yeah. and all kinds four, of different... Was it four million, 440 million pints of milk, if you needed it? Anyway, Kieran, <laughs> thanks very much. <laughs> Neymar in milk. Um, I wonder what Carol's worth. She's more than that.